Hi, I'm Cooper for Rack Robotics, and today we're continuing our series on assembling your Wire EDM starter kit. In today's video, we're going to cover the cam process for this aluminum mount that we made in a recent video. Coming over to our CAD, we have a relatively simple sheet metal mount design, and I want to point out some of the key details here. You can see in here to each of the holes, we actually have a cutout, and that cutout is about the same width as the kerf that we expect for our wire EDM cut. And that is there to make sure that when we actually cut this out, it's one continuous profile all around the outside of the part. We don't have to worry about popping any holes prior to actually starting our machining process. To get this over to CAM, we're going to create a flat pattern. And now we have our flat pattern here. Now, if you directly export this DXF, it's going to include these bend lines in here which can cause problems with our cam. What I'll do is I actually make a new sketch on the face that I want to cut out, and I'll export this as a DXF. From here, we can go over to our cam program, EDM Web, which you can download on the Rack Robo GitHub page. I'll link it below. So here in EDM Web, I can add a document, which I'm just going to add the DXF that we made previously. I'll drag that down to the G code area here and we can rotate the part until it's in an orientation that we like, and then make sure we place it where we want it in the work area. I always make sure to place my part a little bit off of any axis here, just so if my workpiece itself starts on these axes, I'll have a little bit of extra material to cut through and it'll hold onto the part better when it's cutting. So down here on the settings, I want minimum Z travel because that just takes time in my code. I removed the Z axis from my ender so I don't really need to change any of this. It's not going to affect my code, but your machine might be different. Down here on the tool diameter, we have a wire of 0.3 millimeters and we have about 63 microns of spark length in addition to that wire diameter. So we're about 0.46 millimeters for our total tool diameter. Here on travel speed, we're gonna be traveling through the work to get to our machining point. So I'm gonna set that at our machining speed of around 15 millimeters per minute. Plunge rate, I'm just gonna make 15 millimeters per minute and cut rate is also gonna be 15 millimeters per minute. From here, we can generate our G code and everything looks pretty good. We have this line going right through the work here, but something you might not notice initially if we pan down here, is that our path actually goes down in the z-axis quite a bit. This is a leftover from the original PowerCore V1 rod EDM implementation, which EDM Web was made for. So in order to fix that, we're actually gonna go down to wear ratio. And on wear ratio, I'm gonna set that to something small, like 1 10,000th. When we regenerate our toolpath, you can see that our Z movement is almost entirely eliminated. The next thing we need to check out is right over here, virtual wire EDM cut. This type of cutting mode is going to cut directly on the line that we specify from the DXF, but we don't want that. We've designed this with the kerf in mind, so we're gonna go over and we're gonna tell it that this is an outside cut. So that way, all of the paths are on the outside of the work, taking into account the tool diameter. So we'll generate again, and now you can see something strange happened to our cut. There's all these lines all over the place. Why did that happen? Well. This was actually an error of mine in the CAD, but it's good to show you. See right here, the program doesn't think that its tool can make it through here. This gap is about 0.46 millimeters, and our tool diameter is also 0.46 millimeters. I can deal with six hundredths of a millimeter in accuracy on this specific test. So I'm going to change that tool diameter to 0.4 millimeters. I'm gonna regenerate. Now we're back to being a single continuous profile instead of several different profiles all over the work. And the last thing that we need to take a look at before we actually go and try to cut this is this line going here. This tells me that the tool's gonna try to cruise right through the middle of our workpiece down to the starting position. I can't have that, I need a complete part. So I'm going to save this file, I'm gonna export that G-code, and we're gonna make a few modifications to the path we take to our machining starting point. So opening up our G-code just in Notepad, you can see that we have some of our starting information here. Since I'm using Clipper to run my machine, I like to set kinematic position to 0, 0, negative 1. Since my cut start is at negative 1, I'm already there. I don't have to travel at all to get to that. And 0, 0 just means I'm in the middle of my workpiece. This is a lot easier for machining type operations where you're kind of setting things up yourself. You're not relying on the machine so much to know what's going on. Then I have my power core on and my spool motor on macros, which turn on those respective parts during this, so I don't have to worry about turning these things on or off. We'll go down here and we see all of the cut parameters that we actually placed into EDM web here. 
and we see some stuff that's not actually necessary for wire EDM machining, like these retracts. We can get rid of those. And the plunges. And also a secondary rapid. So the important thing we're going to look at right here is our path zero rapid to initial position. That is what we see right here, this line. We don't want that line, we want to modify that. I want it to go straight down and straight over to get to that point. So what we're going to do is write a little bit of G-code. My first move is going to be to stay stationary in the x-axis and then go slightly below where I want to start in Y. So if this is 35.706, I'll just go down to negative 36 and I'll maintain my same machining speed. From here, we can go over to our starting position in the X and we're going to maintain our Y position as well as our feed rate. It's not necessary to put this feed rate here a second time, but I just like to do it. It makes me feel a little bit safer. And then we can also just get rid of this Z movement. Again, it's not necessary. So we're going to save that and we're going to double check our work coming over here back into EDM web. We're going to load that G code document. And you can see here, after loading our G-code document, we have a straight path down below where our cut is going to be over to our start position here. And it cruises up into the work and then it'll start its cut. If we want, we can preview that with the simulator here. That looks good to me. And that wraps up the general cam process. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you'd like to see video of this part being cut, please check out the video linked in the description. If you have any questions, we also have a Discord linked below. Make sure to like and subscribe for more, and we'll see you guys next time.